I don't know if you're going to reach each other. Oh, it'd be cool if we could. There we go. Well done. You're a genius. Step this fella. Oh. High five. Very well. <laughs> oh, good. We're going to not let him go to work today and, um, until he lets people actually go to work for our alternative energy in this country, until he makes that possible and incentivizes alternative energy in a way that makes it viable, we're just not going to let him go to work. <laughs> he can occupy his house. So I'm here, I'm ready to just, you know, blockade. He'll never get us out with this. Some on the door here. Looks like you guys could be here for quite a while. <laughs> <laughs> so he's shall definitely in there, but he's not opening up. Somebody's, shall we, somebody's shall we in there, but they're not there opening and up. Knock on the door. I mean, maybe oh, he yeah. just doesn't want to answer the door for a, you know, a lovely okay. person. You wanna, I think you can he's got a nice smile. <laughs> no good. Let's go. What's going on? has been um, shut down, the government has bailed out banks, it's get bailed out car companies and yet it can't find the political will to really address this problem. They've promised uh, a greener future, Ed Miliband has laid out this plan and yet uh, Peter Mandelson who's in charge of business and energy which really illustrates how intrinsically linked our economy and sustainable development really are, um, is deaf to the needs of our country and, and the globe in terms of seriously addressing climate change as one of the greatest threats that faces everyone. Um, I think it's an irresponsible and short-term measure. Just waiting for him to come out, start running the country. In this case, I would argue that the lives of individuals are not as important as the, the greater cause of looking after humanity as a whole and climate justice yeah totally like if they can bail out the banks with 1.4 trillion pounds then they need to be bailing out our green future now <laughs> 